The topic for this lecture is fighting World War II, and the focus question is what led to American participation in World War II? With the country facing economic crisis in the 1930s, international affairs garnered little public attention. But FDR innovated in foreign and domestic policy. In 1933, trying to encourage trade, he recognized the Soviet Union. Roosevelt also repudiated the right to intervene with military force in the internal affairs of Latin American nations, an approach he called the good neighbor policy. The United States withdrew troops from Haiti and Nicaragua and accepted Cuba's repeal of the Platt Amendment, which had authorized U.S. intervention in that nation. But Roosevelt, like previous presidents, recognized undemocratic governments like that of Somoza in Nicaragua, Trujillo in the Dominican Republic, and Batista in Cuba. However, the United States also took steps to counteract German influence in Latin America by expanding trade and promoting American culture. Events in Asia and Europe quickly took center stage as international order and the rule of law seemed to disintegrate. In 1931, seeking to expand its power in Asia, Japan invaded Manchuria, a northern province in China. In 1937, it pushed further, committing a massacre of 300,000 Chinese prisoners of war and civilians at Nanjing. In Europe, Hitler, after consolidating his rule within Germany, launched a campaign to dominate the continent. He violated the Versailles Treaty by pursuing a massive rearmament, and in 1936 by sending troops into the Rhineland, a demilitarized zone between France and Germany. The failure of Britain, France, and the United States to oppose Hitler's aggression convinced him that these democracies would not resist his aggressions. Benito Mussolini, the father of fascism in Italy, invaded and conquered Ethiopia. When General Francisco Franco, in 1936, mounted a rebellion against the democratically elected government of Spain, Hitler and Mussolini sent men in arms to support him. In 1939, Franco won and established another fascist government in Europe. Hitler annexed Austria and the Sudetenland, a German area of Czechoslovakia, and soon thereafter invaded and annexed all of that nation too. Roosevelt became more and more alarmed by Hitler's actions in Germany and Europe, but in 1937 he called only for a quarantine of aggressors. Roosevelt had little choice but to follow the appeasement policy of France and Britain, who hoped that agreeing to Hitler's demands could prevent war. In 1938, British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain returned from the Munich Conference of 1938, which awarded the Sudetenland to Hitler, promising, quote, peace in our time, end quote. The threat posed by Germany and Japan seemed distant to most Americans, and in fact, Hitler had many admirers in America, from those who praised his anti-communism to businessmen who profited from business with the Nazis, such as Henry Ford. Trade also continued with Japan, including shipments of American trucks, aircraft, and oil, which amounted to 80% of Japan's oil supply. Many Americans now believed that American involvement in World War I had been a mistake and had benefited only international bankers and arms producers. Pacifism attracted supporters across America, from small towns to college campuses. Americans of German and Italian descent also sympathized with fascist governments in their homelands, and Irish Americans remained staunchly anti-British. Isolationism dominated Congress, which in 1935 started enacting a series of neutrality acts banning travel on belligerent ships and arms shipments to warring nations. These were intended to prevent the United States from becoming embroiled in these conflicts by demanding freedom of the seas, just as it had in World War I. Even though the Spanish Civil War was a conflict between a democratic republic and a fascist dictator, the United States and other governments imposed an arms embargo on both sides, effectively allowing Germany and Italy to help Franco overwhelm Spanish government forces. At Munich in 1938, Britain and France capitulated to Hitler's aggression. In 1939, the Soviet Union proposed an international agreement to oppose further German demands for territory, but Britain and France, distrusting Stalin and seeing Germany as a fortress that would check communist power in Europe, declined. Stalin soon signed a non-aggression pact with Hitler, his former enemy. Hitler immediately invaded Poland. Britain and France, allied with Poland, now declared war on Germany. Within a year, the Nazi Blitzkrieg, or Lightning War, overran Poland and much of Scandinavia, Belgium, and the Netherlands. By June 1940, German troops occupied Paris. 
Hitler now dominated Europe and North Africa, and in September 1940, Germany, Italy, and Japan formally created a military alliance known as the Axis. For one year, Britain, led by a resolute Prime Minister Winston Churchill, alone resisted Germany, heroically defending its skies from German planes and bombers in the Battle of Britain. The Germans' bombs devastated London and other cities, but the German air campaign was eventually repelled. Churchill pointedly called on the New World to rescue the old. Though Roosevelt considered Hitler a direct threat to the United States, most Americans simply wanted to avoid war. After fierce debate, Congress in 1940 approved plans for a military rearmament and agreed to sell arms to Britain on a cash-and-carry basis. In other words, Britain would pay in cash for arms and transport them in British ships. But Roosevelt, mindful of the presidential election, went no further. Opponents of American intervention mobilized. They included such prominent individuals as Henry Ford, Father Coughlin, and Charles A. Lindbergh. In that 1940 election, Roosevelt broke precedent by running for a third presidential term. The Republican candidate was Wendell Wilkie, a Wall Street businessman, lawyer, and amateur politician. Little actually differentiated the two, as both supported the first peacetime draft law passed in September 1940 and New Deal social legislation. FDR won the election by a decisive margin. In 1941, the United States became closer to the nations fighting Germany and Japan, and Roosevelt declared that America would be a great arsenal of democracy. With Britain close to bankruptcy, Roosevelt had Congress pass the Lend-Lease Act, allowing military aid to countries who promised to repay it after the war. Under Lend-Lease, the United States funneled billions of dollars worth of arms to China and the Soviet Union. Some Americans, called interventionists, actively campaigned for American involvement in the war, forming societies demanding declarations of war against Germany. Then, on December 7, 1941, Japanese planes launched a surprise attack from aircraft carriers bombing the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. The assault killed more than 2,000 American soldiers and destroyed much of the base and the U.S. Pacific Fleet, except for crucial U.S. aircraft carriers, which helped win critical subsequent victories. Roosevelt, calling December 7th a date which will live in infamy, asked Congress to declare war on Japan, which it did nearly unanimously, 388 votes to one. The next day, Germany in turn declared war on America, and the United States had finally entered the largest war in history. Although in retrospect it seems that America's robust industrial capacity assured its victory over the Axis, success was not immediate. The United States initially experienced a series of military disasters and watched Japan take more territory in Southeast Asia and the Pacific, including Guam, the Philippines, in which the Japanese captured tens of thousands of U.S. troops, thousands of whom died on the way to and within prisoner camps, and other Pacific islands. The largest American surrender in American history, 78,000 American and Filipino troops, occurred in the Philippines. But the tide of the war changed in the late spring of 1942, with American naval victories at Midway Island and in the Coral Sea. These successes allowed the United States to begin a step-by-step island-hopping campaign to reclaim vital and strategic territories in the Pacific. The Grand Alliance, led by American Franklin Roosevelt, Englishman Winston Churchill, and the Soviet Joseph Stalin, band together to stop Hitler at any cost. Each leader had different goals in mind, but Churchill's plan to invade North Africa won out over other strategic considerations, and Churchill maintained that the Allies needed to attack the soft underbelly of the Axis. In November 1942, British and American forces invaded North Africa, and by May 1943, forced the surrender of German forces there. By this time, the Allies had also gained an advantage in the fight in the Atlantic Ocean against German submarines. While Roosevelt wanted to liberate Europe, most American troops stayed in the Pacific. In July 1943, American and British forces invaded Sicily and began the liberation of Italy, whose government, led by Mussolini, was overthrown by popular revolt. Fighting continued against German forces there throughout 1944. America's fight in Europe began on June 6, 1944, known as D-Day. On this date, nearly 200,000 American, British, and Canadian soldiers led by General Dwight D. Eisenhower invaded Normandy in northern France. More than a million troops soon followed them, 
in the largest sea land operation in history. The Germans resisted but retreated, and by August, Paris had been liberated. The most significant clashes, however, took place on the Eastern Front, where millions of Germans and Soviet troops faced each other in very costly battles, particularly at Stalingrad, where a German siege ended in a German surrender to the Soviets, a decisive defeat for Hitler. Other Russian victories marked the end of Hitler's advance and the beginning of the end of the Nazi Empire in Eastern Europe. A full 10 million of Germany's nearly 14 million casualties were inflicted on the Eastern Front, and millions of Poles and Russians, many of them civilians, perished. Moreover, after 1941, Hitler embarked on his final solution to eliminate people and groups he deemed undesirable, including Slavs, Gypsies, homosexuals, and above all, Jews. By 1945, six million Jewish individuals had died in Nazi camps in the culmination of horrifying Nazi ideology known as the Holocaust. <laughs> 